about human beings are that we always have questions and that is how we come to a decision when we talk about taking a particular one. My name is Ayushi and I am from Edureka. So in today's video I will be discussing a very hot topic that has been bothering quite a few techies, engineers, statisticians and business people that is how does one take a proper approach when it comes to become a data scientist or in simple terms how to become a data scientist. So let me just throw some light on this topic. So as I've said that human beings have a lot of questions. So the most relevant ones as far as data science is concerned are these. The first one is why should you go for data science or why should one become a data scientist? Then what is the exact roadmap or the journey to become a data scientist? Next what are the different tools and techniques required given the fact we have so many in the market which ones are the best and how do they fall in the place? And finally towards the end we'll be discussing the different roles and responsibilities that one might pursue when he or she has taken up the path to become a data scientist. So let's start with the very first question that is why should you go for data science or why become a data scientist? Now data scientist is regarded as the sexiest job title of the 21st century. Now why? Well there are a number of points. First of all I would like to tell you that according to Harvard Business Review it is considered as the high ranking professional with the training and curiosity to make discoveries in the world of big data. Therefore, it comes as no surprise that data scientists are the professionals in the big data analytics and the IT industry. Apart from it, this job is for people who like doing things that is different every day. This job will never let you get bored. Now, why I'm saying that? Because there is a challenge and it's always new to learn out of it. Even the data you studied yesterday, that might change over the next day. So that creates more challenges. Secondly, data science and analytics is not just subjected to one particular background or a field. Professionals from different verticals are moving to analytics by learning data science. So let us talk about all these one by one. So first is healthcare. Now have you ever imagined from where does healthcare have so much data coming from? So the data basically comes from the various sources like EMR, which is an electronic medical records. Then we have labs, we have medical correspondence, we have databases, and we have many other things. Therefore, big data and data science play a major role in the healthcare sector. Then we have travel industry. So here again data science is highly adopted for more business opportunities. Then you have customer satisfaction. Let's say if your customer is most likely to leave a negative feedback. So what you can do you can sweep in and become the helping hand to make instant yet less painful changes to their travel plans. Therefore with the amount of data present there is a huge opportunity to shape the future of travel and help the travel experience better which will also result in a good revenue for the organization as well. Next there is finance where banks, insurance companies, investment companies and other financial bodies harness large volumes of data from various sources such as your transactional detail or you can say the real time marketing feeds. Then you have social media posts and existing database of customers as well. So there is a large amount of data that has been generated every day. So well we have just touched a handful of industries and professionals who can learn data science. But today any business that comes to your mind is big database. So the reach is endless. Moving ahead, the third reason is increasing trend and the salary. So it's not just the job openings and the opportunities, but how much it pays. Yes, let us talk about money now. So can you think of a figure of how much a data science job can fetch you? Well, the average salary of a data scientist in US is approximately $120,000. Well, you can bet on it by comparing it with the salaries with any other IT jobs. Next, let us have a look at the roadmap. So first you need to start with the statistics or you can say the basic mathematics. Then you must know any one programming language. After that you should also be having a knowledge of databases. Then comes the major role of a data scientist where one can implement machine learning and some concepts of deep learning as well. Next in this era of big data you should definitely know some of the big data tools and technologies. And once the data is here you must know how you can ingest the data process the data or you can say clean the data which is also called as data ingestion and munging. So after that it is very important to present your data or you can say visualize the data. Let's say in the form of bar graph or line chart so that a layman can easily understand it. And finally one should be capable enough to make data driven decisions to solve any problem. So once you acquire all these skills congratulations you will be a data scientist. Next let us go into the details of all these skills one by one. So the first is statistics. So statistics basically deals with the mathematical area. It includes your exploratory data analysis where a data scientist analyze different characteristics of data. For example, mean, median, range, standard deviation and we have many other things. After you come to know what actual data reveals, you can think of various possible outcomes in an experiment. So to name some of the probability distributions, we have Poisson distribution, we have binomial distribution and we have many more like that. 
Next, you can apply various theorems and equations to manipulate the data according to your needs, such as Naive Bayes theorem, or you can say linear transformations. Then what you can do with that data, you can basically measure how far a number is spread out from the average values. That is nothing but your variance calculated by the curve analysis. So these are all the basics which you need to know or it's just a general mathematics that you must be aware of. So a good data scientist must be able to understand what the data is telling you and to do that you must have a basic linear algebra and understanding of algorithm and statistics skills. Now once you understand statistics for data analysis, you are half a data scientist. Now why I'm saying that because you can discover from data and for that first you need to understand the data and rest are things that you will be doing on the data. So this actually forms a very core part of decision making. Now from here you can take you to the advanced level which can be done using machine learning and deep learning. But again that is an advanced level of discussion. So we'll be doing that in our further slides. But for now what you need to do you first need to analyze the data so that you can take meaningful decisions out of it. So now let us consider the other problems that we face while we are in the flow. So moving ahead with data we can't write everything on pen and paper and draw the graphs right. So we need some sort of programming. So next we have programming. So to become a data scientist you must be well versed with the programming skills. Now the most commonly used programming languages are Python, R and SAS. So let us discuss all of them one by one. Now Python is an open source general purpose programming language which is extremely simple and is very easy to learn. So it is a very powerful language which closely resembles your English language as well. It is also portable or you can say it is fit for many platforms be it Linux platform be it Macintosh or anything. Next Python has many libraries starting from your numerical arrays to machine learning to your visualization. So some of the libraries are NumPy, SciPy, Matplotlib, Seaborn and all of these. So you can perform almost any statistical operation or build any model using these libraries. Next let us talk about R. Now R is another language which is mostly preferred by data scientists. So R is again an open source and it is a programming as well as a statistical language. Well, one reason that it is said that R is very easy is that it is very well documented. It is also cost effective and has strong statistical capabilities. Then we have SAS. So SAS basically stands for Statistical Analysis System. It is the most used tool in the commercial analytics market and contains various statistical functions along with a very good GUI. Now SAS is also considered as a four generation programming language. So basically a four generation programming language is designed with a specific purpose in mind such as the development of commercial business software. Therefore SAS is designed to reduce the programming effort and minimize the time and cost it takes to develop a software. Also Python and R are not the four generation languages. Now for each of these programming languages there are various inbuilt libraries for visualizations and they are fairly nice. But when you talk about business end perspective you need to have proper visualization tools and we'll be having the discussion over that in the further slides. So again if you have to choose any programming language I would any day go with Python. But if you're coming from data analytics background R would be a better choice for you. So it all depends on your need. So basically you just need to be expertise in any of the programming language be it Python be it R or SAS. Next you must have some database knowledge. Now with the large amount of data that has been generated every day you need to store it somewhere. So you must have the basic database knowledge to store and analyze the data. Well nowadays every companies are using various database management systems such as MySQL or Cassandra which is a NoSQL database to store the data. So working with databases will surely secure your dream job to become a data scientist. Next and very important is machine learning and deep learning. So a data scientist is incomplete without these. So machine learning basically uses artificial algorithms to turn the data into value and learn without being explicitly programmed. Then we have deep learning. So deep learning models are capable of learning to focus on the right features by themselves requiring a little guidance from the programmer. So basically deep learning mimics the way that our brain works. That is it learns from the experience. Next deep learning is also a subfield of machine learning which is concerned with the algorithms that is inspired by the structure and the function of the brain which is called as artificial neural networks. Then we have various algorithms in machine learning and deep learning. So talking about machine learning we have algorithms such as supervised learning, unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. So you need to have good knowledge on various algorithms such as linear regression, then we have logistic regression, k-means clustering, decision tree and we have many more like that. And in deep learning we have libraries such as TensorFlow and Keras to implement it. You can also take it forward and understand how convolutional neural network, recurrent neural networks and RBM work together. Next in our list is big data. So there is a huge amount of data that has been floating around and what we do with it is all that matters right now. 
Big data and data science is not only seen in the IT field, but it has spread across all the leading industries today. Therefore, it makes it evident that for a certified data science professional, sky is the limit. And big data analytics has become a major role as it helps in improving business decision makings and providing the biggest edge over the competitors. So with big data, you can perform distributed processing and you can even write map reduce codes. So one should definitely know big data technologies and the most popular ones are Hadoop HDFS and Apache Spark. Then we have data ingestion and munging. So the process of importing, transferring, loading and processing the data for later use or you can say storage in a database is called as data ingestion. So this involves loading data from a variety of sources. So some of the data ingestion tools are Apache Fume and Apache Scoop. So if you have ever performed data analysis, you might have come across feature selection before you apply it to your analytical model to the data. So in general, all the activity that you do on the raw data to make it clean enough to input to your analytical algorithm is called as data munging. So you can use any programming language for that. You can use R or you can use Python packages for that as well. So as a data scientist, you must be able to understand what all features are important in the data set and what all features can be removed. And obviously you have to remove some inconsistencies in the data set and all these things comes under the part of data munging or you can say data wrangling. Then we have visualization. So data visualization is a very important part of a data life cycle. Now a good hands on knowledge is required on various visualization tools. Even you can use a programming language for that purpose, but you need to understand the basics of good visualization and reporting. So you don't have to become a graphic designer, but you need to be well versed in how to create reports that a complete layman can understand it, such as you can show your reports to a manager or maybe directly to the CEO. So you will definitely not be showing the course to him, right? So it is very important to present your data in the right way. So now some of the major popular visualization tools are Tableau, we have click view then we have Google charts and we have many more tools in the market, but these are the most popular ones used in the market today. So till now we have discussed the various tools and technologies. Next is your problem solving or how a data scientist can solve everything. Now basically data driven problem solving approach is something that you need to develop and that will only come with experience. So a data scientist needs to know how to productively approach a problem. So the first thing he needs to understand the data or you can say explore the data. He must know what data tells from it. What are the salient features of it and all those things. Then he needs to analyze the data properly or you can say what patterns can be drawn from the data or how can you frame a question that will help you yield the right answer. So all this comes in the part of analysis. Then deciding what approximations make sense. Take the appropriate action or train the model to get the desired results. Afterwards, you can just communicate with the co-workers perform visualizations and get the desired output. But for that, all you need is practice and practice. If you actually want to get into this field, you need to have more and more hands on experience. And for that, what you can do, you can go ahead and build your own projects and then you can explore various data sets. You can also enter various competitions which has been organized by Kaggle and many of the websites out there. So a data scientist will have all the relative industry requirements and it is capable enough to do the job. Next, let us understand the various roles and responsibilities of a data scientist. So as we have discussed, a data scientist is not only responsible for business analytics, they're also involved in building data products and software platforms, along with developing visualizations and machine learning algorithms. Some of the prominent data scientist job titles are data engineer, then we have data architect, we have data administrator, then we have data analyst, business analyst, data analytics manager, and business intelligence manager. So you can choose any field. So organizations who previously did mining dealt with well-behaved data. But today the amount of unstructured data is far more than the structured ones and it definitely needs highly expertise data scientists to handle them. So this condition is not only seen in a particular sector, but it is faced across all the industries. So learning and getting equipped with data science skills and technologies will not only fill the need of data scientists, but it will also going to make you the IT superheroes. So to be among them, a data science course is a must. So anyone with the passion to become a data scientist can become one through professional data science training. So get trained in data science and become the coolest professional in the IT field. Now to get in-depth knowledge on data science, you can enroll for the live data science certification training by Edureka with 24 seven support and the lifetime access. So it provides courses on R programming as well as the Python programming. Now in R programming, it will help you to gain expertise in machine learning algorithms like K-means, clustering, decision tree, random forest and many more using the R language. It will also help you understand the concepts such as statistics, time series, text mining and an introduction to deep learning as well. 
So throughout this data science course, you will be implementing various real life use cases on media, healthcare, social media and HR. Next, it is the same course available in Python language as well. So here again, it will help you to gain expertise in various machine learning algorithms. Then it will expose you to the concepts of statistics, time series and different classes of machine learning such as your supervised learning, then unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning. So throughout this data science certification training, you will be having 24 seven support and the lifetime accessibility to the course as well. So you can go ahead and choose any one of it. Now let me just summarize today's session. So first of all, we had a look to various facts as to why you should go for data scientist. Then we have talked about the roadmap or the journey to become a successful data scientist. After that, we have understood all the tools and techniques required to become one and discuss the various roles and responsibilities of a data scientist. And finally, towards the end, I have talked about the trainings which are provided by Edureka that is both in Python programming language as well as R programming language. So don't just learn it guys, master it with Edureka. I hope you found the session informative. Well, thank you so much. Bye bye. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!